Hey everyone, welcome to another quick Avid tutorial. And this is really more in the category of just a tip or making you aware of something you may not have known about. And that is the way that you can duplicate and copy clips and sequences in some different ways for different functions you might have within your project organization. You're hopefully aware that you can duplicate clips or sequences. So if I have this thing here called new sequence and I just hit command D, that'll duplicate it and I get a copy of it, it says .copy.01 at the end by default and I could change the name of this, say this is my duplicated sequence or whatever. And this is really handy, we use this all the time. So like let's say I was editing and I finished editing for the day and I might call this, you know, edit whatever the date is. So today it is July 2nd, 2023 in this case. So I might do something like that and then I'll come in the next day and duplicate it and say, okay, this is for my work on the third and open up this and as I'm editing in this sequence that way if I really screw something up and I want to get back to what I had the day before I'm like man I went in this direction and just didn't work and I now know that that path isn't the way to go but I need to get back to where I was I can pull up this original sequence and duplicate it and kind of start back where I was so I usually do that anytime I'm making any major changes to an editor trying some different direction or uh, rearranging some scenes and trying to see if that works better or something like that or often just at the end of the day, just like, okay, here's where I was at this day. So I can always kind of get back to that and kind of see where I may have branched off in different directions if I need. So that's the command D duplicate. The other thing I wanted to point out though, is there's another way to copy things that works with clips. It does not work with sequences, but it can be really handy in your organization. So I can duplicate clips the same way. So here I have a clip and I could do the same thing and command D and duplicate it and you know, call this whatever I want, new version, whatever. And it's reading the same media, but now this is a different clip. And so I could put this in a different bin or something like that. But a lot of times what I might want is to have the same clip in multiple bins. So for instance, if I'm working on a documentary project or something, I may want things organized by, hey, here's all the shots of this person. Here's all the shots I did in this location. Here's all the shots I shot on this particular shooting day or whatever. And obviously the same clip might have a couple different people in it and it's in a location and it was shot on a particular day. So I might want that clip in a few different places so that when I'm looking for something like, man, I need a shot of this person, you know, I can go to the bin of that person and find that. Or I might have said like, oh man, you know, I'm editing this sequence with something else. And I really could just use like, do I have any good B-roll of that location? and go to the bin by location and find that. So it can be helpful organizationally to have the same thing in multiple places. I find this most helpful on documentary, but even in fiction stuff, I'll often organize things at least by what reel it was, like what memory card it came off of, and then what date it was shot, and then what scene it's in, and then sometimes things may be in other places as well. Now the thing with that is I could do the same thing. So I could you know, take this clip and I'm gonna duplicate it and then drag this to this other bin and now I have a copy of this clip here and a copy of it here that are both dealing with the same media. But they're, at this point, different clips in terms of how Avid is treating them. And sometimes I actually might want the same clip. And what I mean by that is something that not only deals with the same media, but Avid treats it as the same original clip. It's the same pointer, same information about it. In this case, let's say that I wanted to do that. What I'm going to do is if I just drag this to a different bin, it's going to just move it. All right, so you can see it left this first bin. You know, not there anymore and goes into the second one. What I can do instead is if I hold down option, and this is not a Mac, I believe it's all on the PC, but not 100% sure of that. Hold down option and drag this down here and you'll see it makes a version of it, but there's still a version here. Now here's the thing that's different than the duplicate command. In this case, these are actually referencing not just the same media, but they're the same clip. So let's say I look at this and I decide this is a character sitting at table and I change the name of it. You'll notice it updated that in this bin as well, because it's not just dealing with that media, it's like this is all the same information. If I go in here and I, you know, set an in point here and an out point here or something, and then I load up this clip, it shows the same thing. So this is a case where I could literally have the same exact clip in multiple bins at the same time. And again, I would do this just for organizational purposes if I wanna be able to find something easily and I might categorize it a few different ways if I'm working on a larger project with a lot of media. In terms of the actual media it's referring to, this is no different than if I just do the command D duplicate and put a copy in each bin. But sometimes there are things where I might update something in a clip. Maybe I did something to change some of the audio tracks. Maybe it was something that was oriented weird and I have to do a resize or a reorientation on the clip. Any of that stuff I do that's inherent to the clip itself will carry through then to all the bins. I don't have to go through and update all of them individually. And I'll say one way that I use this is when I bring in clips at 
the start, they don't have any particular interesting names. You know, they're just things like this, whatever numbering system your camera gave them. I might immediately just sort of throw them in like, okay, I know all these clips were things shot on this date. So I'm going to throw a copy of these into this bin by date. So if I'm looking for things shot that date, I can find it. And I know all of this was at this location. So I'm going to throw it in there. And I can just do that with the things named this. And then at some point later on, when I start going through this and like seeing what this actually is and naming all the clips, it's getting updated in all those bins. So when I go back to the bin from that date, I don't just see a random string of numbers. I have all the clips labeled that way, even if I made these duplicates beforehand. So that's just a handy feature to know about. Again, just hold down option and drag it in. I will point out this does not work with sequences. So if I do it with a sequence, I'm going to hold down option and drag this sequence in here. You'll see it still makes a copy and I can name this something different and it's not affecting this one. These are actually two different sequences now as far as Avid is concerned. I can change one and it doesn't affect the other. So this is specific to clips, but a handy organizational feature. Hope that's useful for you. See you next time.